Oh, welcome to March favourites. Here we are. I can't believe it's April. That's kind of mental to me. When it got to February, I was like, that's all right. And now suddenly in the blink of an eye, it's April. Not that I'm complaining. I've got an exciting month ahead, I think. I hope. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to start with TV shows. The first one is another Dutch one recommended to me by my Dutch grandma. She's great at recommending me stuff. And it's called Project Dance, which is like Project Dance. And it's, I think it was 10 dancers from Holland are competing and they want to prove themselves in as many styles as possible. I don't think I'm describing it very well, but it's very good. If you can watch it with translations, I, if you don't speak Dutch, I would recommend it. I was able to watch it in the UK, so hopefully you can. I thought it was very impressive and very interesting and I was very happy to be watching it. Next, Jessica Jones season two. I think I really enjoyed this, but I cannot remember because I think we watched it at the start of the month and I don't remember much of it. But I tend to like Jessica Jones anyway as a character and her world within the Marvel universe, whatever. Like the characters she interacts with and things like that. I feel like I can't even remember like the plot line of it or anything. Oh my goodness, I do. And it was good, but it did get to a point where it was just very frustrating, but in a good way like that you were meant to feel, I think, frustrated. And then Luke Cage season two. This was my least favorite of all the Daredevil-y ones we've watched so far. In case you're new here, hi, by the way, I haven't even said hello. At the end of each month, I review things I've consumed each month. And the last however many years, I've been trying to catch up on all things Marvel with a friend. And relatively recently, we found out Daredevil was coming back into the Marvel universe. So we had to w go back and watch all the what we called Netflix Mar uh, Daredevils and spin-off shows and whatnot. And there's a lot and it's taken us a long time. And the latest one we watched was Luke Cage season two because we're watching them in order, as in when they came out, release date order. And I didn't love Luke Cage season one. I think at the time that was my least favorite of the ones we'd watched. I love the character of Luke Cage and he was first introduced in Jessica Jones and I loved him as a character but I didn't love the first season of the TV show and I really didn't like the second season. It was just really negative. There wasn't any character really that I was rooting for or that I was happy to see on the screen. There was one character I think that came in in episode 10 or 11 that I did like and I was very happy to see but really on the whole I just hated everyone. And it was, it was just not a pleasant watch and I was lost again. I mean, to be fair, as I mentioned last month and probably multiple times in the past, I'm not good at keeping track of who's who and who are we rooting for and why are they bad, etc. But I was again quite lost in this show. And then add on top of that, nothing fun, nothing happy, nothing comical. I just didn't, I didn't like that. Moving on to books, we've got four. The first one is The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Iturba. I really hope I pronounced that right. This book, I this book caught my eye. I, I think I've mentioned all the time that I love historical fiction and especially sort of veering into non-fiction as well and World War II stuff I'm always interested in. And I read The Tattooist of Auschwitz a few years ago, I think, and obviously the title is very similar. And this book was gorgeous. I mean, it was sad. Of course it was but it was gorgeous and I really highly recommend it. And it is again based off a true story and it's, it, it's, it is fiction, it is considered a fiction, but it's very truly based on people's stories and it, it just really got me. And at the end they spoke about the real life characters that it's based off of, or the real life people I should say, and it was, yeah, just recommend it. That's all I can say. Then the next two are the next two Magnus Chases, because I w read the first one last month. So that's Magnus Chase and the Hammer of Thor and Magnus Chase and the Ship of the Dead. And I liked both of these. I don't think I've got much to say about them. They're very, they're very young adults and I'm not really a young adult anymore, which is kind of weird. And especially not my reading, because even when I was a young adult, I wasn't always reading young adults fiction. So it's good. It's sweet. If I was a young adult, you know, 15, 16, maybe I would love it. But I liked it. It was it was fine. And the last one was, I think, my first nonfiction of the year, which is kind of mental. And it's Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Judy Smith. And I've said to myself 101 times, I need to stop picking self-help books because I have been trying to read a lot more nonfiction in the past year or so. And almost every time I read a self-help book, not every time, but almost every time, I just don't enjoy it. And this book, I have to say, I think it's very good for a lot of people. I just don't think it's very good for me because everything she was talking about, I've already acknowledged and I'm aware of and I've gone through those processes. 
I think it's an important book and I think if you feel you need potentially help in terms of your mental health or life this could be a very good book it just wasn't right for me and that's not a reflection on the book that's just a reflection of me but it was definitely not a bad book I've read self-help books before where I've thought this is a bit rubbish and this wasn't that Anyway, skipping on to musicals, we've got first of all, and I've put this under musicals, it's not really, but it's ABBA Voyage. I have been desperate to see this since it came out, came to London. I'm a huge ABBA fan, always have been. I'm not a concert fan though, I've never gone to a concert. This was my first sort of experience of a concert, I think. But if you live in London or if you've been trying to get tickets for ABBA Voyage, you'll know that they are very expensive. And I was incredibly lucky to get my hands on a pair of pretty cheap tickets. If you're new here again, I will do a ranking at the end of the year of all the shows I see. I do a lot with musical theatre. My background's musical theatre. There's a lot. And I think soon, or maybe by now it's already gone up, there is a video going up of all the shows I saw last year. Maybe not a ranking, I can't remember, but definitely a review of each one. But anyway, I loved this. I have social anxiety, so I don't love crowds and that's why I've never gone to a concert. The thought of it is absolutely horrible. And there was still a little element of that for me that I felt, oh, I don't like how loud this is. I don't like how many people there are, but I was seated. And on the whole, I loved it. I thought it was very well done. I wouldn't say it was 100% as if they were there, but only because you could tell there was just something a little bit off. But on the whole, it was very good. And you know, it's ABBA. But I don't think I would want to pay. I think I would have felt a lot worse if I'd paid upwards of 80 pounds. I only paid, I think it was less than 30, but even I think like 50, 50 would be my max budget for that. I don't think it's worth upwards of 80 or 100, but that's my personal preference. And then literally yesterday, I went to see Frozen with my brother. I saw Frozen last year with my sister actually, and I loved it. And I loved it again this time around. It's just a magical show as it should be. And I like the way they've changed some things or added some things from the movie and the cast was phenomenal. I just really enjoyed it and I would recommend going to see it if you're in London before it closes in September. And if you don't want to take my word for it, take my brother's because he loved it too. Now the next one I've put in music but it's kind of musical as well and it's Seussical the musical. I was in Seussical before I started my YouTube channel so a long time ago. It was the first school musical I was in and I have such fond memories of that show. I loved the atmosphere, I loved being a part of it, I loved the songs, I loved the choreography. I had a, not a great part, but there were basically, there were two different ensembles and I was definitely in the more fun one. There was one that was literally just, they were in I think two or three songs and most of it was stand and sing and then the one we were in was really dancey and we were in loads of songs and it was just so much fun. And to this day, I still remember a lot of the choreography from the opening number of The Things You Can Think. And I don't even know why, but I've just, I, I thought, you know, I want to have a listen and see if it's on Spotify. And it was. So I just listened through all the songs, added a lot of them to my playlist, and it's been bringing me a lot of joy. Because even though I loved the show and I, you know, I would watch it back occasionally, maybe, or, you know, sections of it or whatever, I haven't really listened to the songs in years and I just love it. I love it and I think it's one of those shows that if it came to London or Holland or anywhere, I know it was in Holland in, in London a few years ago, but if it comes to the UK or anywhere anytime soon, Australia, I would be so desperate to be in it. Partly because it kind of feels like where my journey started, but also just because it's such a fun show. I'm, I'm desperate to be in it again. I just think it's such fun. Anyway, rambling on. On to food. I've got three little things. Number one is the cranberry and raspberry tea that we have at home. It's just lovely and sweet, which I like. And then number two and three I'm going to go get for you. This month we did our Dear Hopefuls box swap. Dear Hopefuls is the other channel I'm part of. And there's two of us in the UK, but in different places in the UK. And Sam is in America. And a number of years ago, I think it's six years ago, we did a box swap and we did it again finally this year where we send each other goodies of things we have or enjoy or whatever. And Sam from America, first of all, gave us this blueberry tea, which is really nice. And second of all, and I was very excited about this, gave us 
some squeezy honey. And genuinely, this is really nice on its own. This is really nice on its own and it's really nice together. So I was very happy. Now in fashion, I've just got one thing and it's the top I'm wearing right now. It's this green stripy top that I have had in the cupboard for a few years, probably about four years. And it's one I've always sort of had in the back of the cupboard, not really worn very much. Can't figure out what to style it with because it's stripy. And I own a lot of stripy stuff, but also like the cut is not, you know, it's a bit awkward. I got it secondhand from a friend and I've always just kept it in case, but I don't really tend to wear a lot of green anyway. But then March was St. Patrick's Day and I have an Irish friend who told me to dress green. So I found a way of styling this that I really liked. And then I've also now today paired it with just my green trousers. And I'm just, it's growing on me. I like this neckline and I do like stripes. And it's nice to have a different color because most of my clothes are blue. So yeah, I'm happy. And the material's nice and it's light, you know, it's not thick or anything, I, I'm happy. And then we've got two little others. Number one is a YouTuber called Gaz Oakley. And actually I'll combine them with another YouTuber who is Pick Up Limes. Both of them are cooking YouTubers, vegan I believe, and I've just enjoyed watching them and their recipes and I'm trying to steal some of their <laughs> recipe ideas just for home life that I want to make one day. And then the last thing is a game which I was literally introduced to yesterday, no two days ago sorry, called Dutch Blitz. It's a card game, it's easy to learn. I don't like learning new games, but once I'm playing them, usually I do like them. But this one was so easy to learn and just so much fun. And I loved it. I want to buy it for myself. My brother brought it over and I will, I think, be buying myself a pack. And I would recommend other people buying a pack too. Not sponsored, obviously. And then for my song of the month, I have already mentioned it actually sneakily in there. It's Oh The Things You Can Think from Suzical. As I said, this was the opening number. I still remember most of the dance. I love this song, I love the show. And that's all I want to say about it. You've probably, if you've been on this channel long enough, you would have seen me wear my top from Suzical many, many times. It says a person's a person no matter how small. But yeah, I love it. How long has this piece of hair been there? Anyway, that is everything. And I will see you pretty soon with another video. Bye.